Guys, thanks for checking out another episode of Michigan Roots. In today's episode, we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of how we go about making the jigs that we use for steelhead fishing. We had such a great uh, success with them, our last steelhead trip. Uh, if you haven't already watched the video, uh, I'll put the link uh, in the description so you guys can go check out exactly what we were using from rods and reels to jigs. So uh, we're gonna go through the whole process step-by-step -step on how we go about pouring the jigs, to final result of powder coating them. So anyways, glad you guys are sticking around. Enjoy the show. Okay, so what we're using today, we're gonna make a, a tapered tube jig for steelhead fishing. This mold here uh, has 1 16th and 1 32nd ounce. So you can see here, it'll have four of them that are 1 32nd and four that are 1 16th. We're gonna use a 16th ouncers. So what you wanna do is start off with has some hot good lead in your pot. And what you wanna do these molds first is you wanna preheat them. So you kinda of wanna make a couple dry runs. So you just kinda of pour the old lead to it. And even though we're not using that 132nd on this end, we still wanna heat the whole mold. So go ahead and pour your, pour your lead like that and just let it set, let it warm that mold. And you wanna open her up. And as you can see there, we did a couple trial runs before we started the video, but it's showing that we are pouring the whole full cavity. So at this time, we'll just take it right out of the mold. We'll dump it back in our pot. And this time, we'll load the jig, or the, we'll load the mold. So just take your hook and just put them in there like that. You kind of give them a one look over, make sure the hook is in the appropriate places and they just close the mold and the trick here is, is you just want a nice consistent pour if you overfill it it's no big deal you just don't want to go slow because that's where it will you'll have incomplete pour and then let it kind of cool you'll see it form and harden up and just kind of give it a second and open it up and see we got full full jig so then just take that out. We'll take them sprues off later as it cools and then load her up again. Close up the mold. And there you go. Four nice jigs. The mold you can order from Jan's Netcraft. Uh, Barlow's Jig Mold or Barlow's Tackle has them. Um, J Sporting Goods. It's a do-it mold. So, yep, yeah, do it. The lead for these you can get at several places. Um, you can uh, either shop around online or beans how these are a jig hook you don't really necessarily need really soft lead so if you, your last resort if you can't find any from a buddy or a friend or online some really good quality lead uh, usually if you go to any tire store and ask them uh, for a five gallon bucket of wheel weights so they'll usually do that even though wheel weights are a little harder and they have a lot of zinc and tin in them but uh and, and dirty but in a pinch you can use wheel weights as lead as well so the cost on these i believe if you're going to buy them in a store painted and everything they're like a buck 50 a piece buck 49 something like that so these hooks i believe are like 11 dollars at jan's netcraft for 100 of them so 
a little more than 10 cents a piece per hook. The mold was $40. Um, I'm not sure what these pots are for melting lead, but uh, you know, if you, if you enjoy doing this kind of thing, you can make your money back and return really fast and something to do in the winter time. Okay, so this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the sprues from the jig head. So it's pretty simple. A lot of these you can just take from the bottom, kind of work them back and forth and they, they'll snap right off. And then what we'll do too is sometimes there's a little bit of trimming we have to do. There's a little piece of lead right there. Just kind of cut that off with a knife a little bit. It's good, but just kind of work them back and forth. That lead there is safe for next time. You can melt it back down, reuse it. That just kind of careful not to hook yourself. Hooks are sharp. So the hooks we're using today are these Mustad. Um, I believe they are a 32833BL size six. They're uh, a double strong um, jig hook for steelhead fishing, or a, a steelhead won't straighten them. Really, really strong hooks. So, there's many YouTube videos out there on fluid beds for powder coating. And basically what this is, I built this myself, went to the Home Depot or Menards, and basically it's two inch PVC pipe. Here's a cap here. There's a piece of pipe in here. This is a coupler piece up top. And between this section here and this coupling, you can see inside there's a grocery paper bag. So all I did is I took a grocery bag, cut it a little larger than the diameter of the pipe, and I wedged it in between here. So basically they have an air chamber here, your paper bag, and then you fill this full of powder coat and it'll bubble it. It'll, it'll fluff it right up like, like water almost. So you can take a jig head and dip it in here, but it's more dense like this. So you'll see in the video where it fluffs it up. And like I said, there's other videos out there that are probably more depth how to build these. And then just used a hose barb here. And I, uh, all I did was I, I cut a smaller diameter hole and I just uh, tightened it up inside there with a little bit of uh, pipe thread. So um, what we're using for powder coat is here's ProTech. Um, you can get this anywhere online, J Sporting Goods. Um, you know, a lot of outdoor stores sell these powder coat. Another real good one is, uh, is TJ's Tackle. It's an online store right here in Michigan. And um, they carry a lot of accessories, your jig hooks, uh, and, a, and a ton of colors. So we'll fill these up and we'll show you what to do. Okay, so what we have for the next setup here is how these fluid beds work, because I just have a regular aerator for a fish tank, fish tank pump to a hose to regulator. And this is where that bottom chamber I was telling you, through the paper bag, it, it flows the air up through and you get a boiling effect. And why I use that paper bag is that's a perfect micron for almost like a filter to where it doesn't allow that uh, powder coat to fall down through, but the air comes up to that paper bag and permeates it and, and gives you this boiling light effect so it's gonna get loud basically these jigs what you're gonna want to do and we'll show you is you heat them up with a heat gun and then you dip them in the powder coat so it's gonna get loud so you're not gonna be able to talk so we'll show you what we're talking about here all we're doing is heating these jigs up you don't want to heat them up too much because if you stand them on there too much it will melt the lead right back off the hook and give it a little swirl
one of the most important things with powder coat painting is make sure that you poke the eyes out before you bake them. So just take another hook and just, you wanna make sure you get all that paint out of there. If you don't and you bake them, this stuff gets so hard, it's a bear. So just ahead of time, it really pays off. Take your time, go through every one and make sure that eyelet's cleaned out really well. So what we're doing here is we're getting ready to bake them. You have to cure this powder coat. And these jigs here I made, and what, why we're doing it this versus hanging them, is I found that at times if you get too much powder coat on them and you hang them upside down, they'll form a big glob right here on the head of it. So what we're doing here, is we're gonna bake them set them upright that way if you have too much powder coat on them it'll it'll come right down on the shank and you can just pop it off so it don't make your jig look all right our last step here we just have a toaster oven it's just a cheap toaster oven i think got myers um basically what you want to do is bake these at 350 degrees for 20 minutes and that's the last step and you're done so Here's these little holders I mentioned earlier. Just want to open up this little oven and slide it in there like that. Slide it in there like that. I give it an extra five minutes to preheat because it, it actually calls for preheat 350 for 20 minutes so I put it on 25 and when it's done it's done that's why I put them in a jig that way if you get too much paint it comes mm -hmm. down the shaft right here to where if you wouldn't have stood them up like that you had them hanging from the rack, you'd have a big ball of just powder paint there. <laughs>